Well, Doc, Dr. Kamitska, it's good to see you again. Here we are. Uh, I'm, you know, I was hoping we had already done our last one of these, but looks like we have at least one more to go. So appreciate you taking the time as usual. And I know you're very busy. So, so thank you very much. Sure. Glad to be here. Yep. Uh, so let me just uh, uh, start by asking you just a, a few questions. What are you seeing right now as far as the Delta and the Omicron in our community? So we can't be entirely specific because we don't uh, do the genotyping locally. Uh, those isolates, uh, selected isolates are sent to the state. I will tell you that the percent test positives have spiked uh, over the past week. Uh, so we were at under 3% for a while, then went up to like 5%, and now it's 25 to 30%. And I think that is Omicron. Uh, and uh, as of last week, 73% of national isolates were Omicron, uh, which was up from like 1.2% uh, uh, the week before. So it's surging. Uh, it's so highly contagious, much more contagious than the Delta or previous variants. So uh, I'm pretty certain that most of the COVID that we're diagnosing now in this community is going to be Omicron. How much more contagious do you believe it is? Well, uh, we know it's at least twice as contagious as Delta, which was itself uh, more than twice as contagious as previous uh, variants. Uh, the comparison is to the measles virus. And measles is one of the most contagious viruses. If I, for example, have measles right now, and then I left this room, the air in the room is gonna remain contagious for two hours after I leave. So highly contagious, which explains why there's so much of a surge of COVID now with the Omicron variant. Hmm. So there's a lot of discussion around vaccines still and boosters. Um, do you have any comments on the benefits of the vaccine and the, and the booster process? What's absolutely vital is that anybody who's not been vaccinated get vaccinated ASAP. Everybody who's been vaccinated and is due for a booster get their booster ASAP. What does that, uh, what does that buy us? What it buys us is that if you are vaccinated and boosted and acquire COVID, you become highly unlikely uh, to become uh, severely ill to require hospitalization or worse. Uh, really the people who are particularly vulnerable now are those who have not had vaccination. Uh, now, a lot of people who've not had vaccination say, well, I had COVID last year. The problem is having COVID more than three months ago doesn't really provide uh, robust protection. Uh, and which is why even if you've had COVID, you still need uh, to get the vaccine. And even if you have the vaccine, let's say it's been six months or more since your second mRNA shot, you need the booster uh, to get from a 35 or so percent protection up to like almost 80%. Uh, so anybody who's had uh, their second mRNA shot six months or more ago, they should be uh, rushing to get their third shot, their booster shot, whether it's Pfizer or Moderna. For those who got Johnson & Johnson, the levels of immunity wane after only two months. And so we would urge them to get boosted. Uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, often recommending for the second shot after Johnson & Johnson, particularly for uh, women under the age of 40, to get an mRNA booster for the Johnson & Johnson, such as Pfizer or, or Moderna. And along that line, can you comment, we've discussed this so many times, but can you comment one more time on the importance of, of wearing a mask? Masks are critically important. Uh, and particularly if you have not been vaccinated and boosted. Uh, but even if you have been vaccinated and boosted, you could still get COVID. Now you may be without symptoms uh, or have mild symptoms, but you could still spread infection to others. Uh, I would say though that uh, uh, this Omicron variant takes masking up to a different level. Uh, we need to sort of be masking on steroids. And the reason again is just how contagious this, this virus is. 
So standard cloth masks that people wear probably are not sufficiently protective. Uh, if you have a, a medical grade mask like this, it's pretty good. Uh, but for most people, uh, if one can get an N95 mask or a KN95 mask, uh, like uh, what, uh, uh, what you're showing there, those or the cup masks, the blue 3M cup masks, those are uh, the best. Uh, and, uh, uh, and that's what I would recommend actually for everybody uh, who is out and about uh, in any indoor setting, like a grocery store, an office, uh, et cetera. Uh, and the Omicron surge hopefully will be relatively brief. Uh, data from other countries would suggest that we're going to reach a peak in just a, a few weeks and, and probably uh, by February will already be uh, on a, uh, a fairly rapid wane. Hopefully that's the case. Hopefully we will mirror what's seen in other countries so far. Uh, but until then, we're going to be in amidst a viral blizzard and masks are critically important to uh, keep from getting uh, uh, infected with th this variant of the virus. Now, Paul, there, there's al already been so many innovations and, and technology advancements around the, the treatment and, and the vaccines themselves. What's on the horizon related to new technologies for the, for the prevention and treatment? Yes. COVID? Yeah. So the most exciting advance is the Pfizer drug, Paxlovid. Uh, this is a drug uh, that we uh, is it's used to treat patients who acquire uh, COVID uh, to prevent them from getting sick with COVID uh, and require hospitalization or worse. And this drug uh, was just approved uh, last week for emergency use authorization. Uh, it belongs to a class of drugs that we've been using for a long time as, as a pro, so-called protease inhibitor. It's orally given a uh, total of 30 tablets uh, over a course of five days. And uh, it looks to be a, about 88% uh, effective in preventing progression of COVID infection to severe disease so long as you start taking the drug within five days of the onset of symptoms. Now, it's not widely available now, uh, and it may be a while for that to get wrapped up, but that's once it does get revved up, it will be a true game changer because for the first time we will have treatment that actually works, uh, antiviral treatment that actually works uh, to prevent serious uh, illness from, from COVID. And uh, that will transform COVID much more into something more akin to the flu. So if you have flu and uh, notify your provider within a day or two, uh, you get prescribed something like Tamiflu, and that significantly shortens uh, and lessens the, the degree, uh, the duration and severity of illness. The same thing can happen with this drug, Paxlovid. Now, uh, in addition to having adequate supplies across the nation, cost is going to be an issue. It's estimated uh, $530 for a course of treatment. Uh, hopefully uh, that will uh, whittle down to something more affordable. Uh, and also uh, what's critical uh, to be able to use that drug effectively uh, is for there to be widespread ability to test. Hopefully everybody will have a number of home tests for COVID. So that if you develop symptoms, you test yourself. If you test positive, call your uh, provider, get a prescription for a Paxlovid, uh, and then can uh, really reassure yourself that, in fact, you're much less likely to de develop serious disease. But I would hasten to add, uh, in the meantime and even afterwards, vaccination remains the cornerstone of prevention. Preventing infection with COVID in the first place is not only important to protect yourself, but also to help prevent the spread of COVID uh, to others. So I would guess that you probably think that more variants are possible. Do you think the new Pfizer drug will be effective on the new variants? So we know, uh, well, we don't know, but we, we expect that it will be effective at least against Omicron. Uh, so that's the, that's the variant that, that uh, the world is dealing with now. Um, 
the, whether it be effective against future variants really will depend uh, upon um, uh, uh, what mutations occur uh, and whether they will affect the target, uh, the protease enzyme of this, um, of the COVID virus. Uh, so time will tell, uh, but I, I think new variants will emerge so long as there are new infections. Basically, variants emerge when mutations happen, and mutations only happen when there are new infections. So there's virus replication, and RNA viruses like this uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, makes a lot of mistakes when they replicate their genome, their RNA. And these are random mistakes, but some of those mistakes may turn out to be advantageous for the virus, so they get preserved. And then you may get a collection of these mutations, uh, such as seen with the Omicron variant, where there are 50 or more mutations on the spike protein, which is what the virus uses to attach to our cells. Uh, and that's what's made this uh, virus uh, so much more contagious. Got it. Okay. Well, Dr. Kaminska, that's all the questions I have. Um, any, any other advice for the community? Well, just, uh, the, you know, we're all so weary of uh, COVID. Uh, we all uh, hate to wear masks. Uh, I do too. Uh, and, but uh, I think we, we need to hang on for this variant, this Omicron variant. Uh, and I think we just need to hunker down like this is a, a blizzard, a winter blizzard, where we need to just use our common sense to prevent getting ill uh, and prevent people from getting really ill. Uh, and succumbing to this virus. This virus has already uh, killed over 800 million Americans. Uh, and the, um, the, uh, the answer for the near future will be uh, effective antiviral therapy, such as the uh, Paxlovid drug. So we're almost there in terms of uh, tipping uh, the, the balance of this uh, infection, this pandemic in such a way that it can be uh, meaningfully less impactful on our lives. So, but until then, mask up, get vaccinated, get boosted. Uh, and then also, if you can get a hold of tests before you gather, for example, for a New Year's Eve party, make sure everybody's tested that day. And if they're negative, you're good to go. Just uh, one clarification. I, I believe you mentioned 800 million lives. I think you meant 800,000. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, 800,000. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. you're right. It seems like 800 million, but you're right. It does. And it, and it feels like 10 years instead of two. It, it, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you again, Dr. Comiska, sure. for all you're doing for the community and, and your patients. I, I very much appreciate it. Um, for more information on COVID-19 from our experts, visit WilmingtonHealth.com. Also, for an up-to-date information on local COVID cases and statistics, please visit nchhs.gov. Dr. Kamiska, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye.